Microsoft Internet Information Services have introduced a bunch of new features in their HTTPS slash DLS offerings. And uh, I have missed some of these features when I made that video on IIS a few months back. And uh, I guess I had a outdated version of Windows when I made that video. Nevertheless, it's worth talking about these beautiful new options that are exposed in the UI and uh, explain why are they even exist because some of them really doesn't make sense to exist right it's like making your uh, system slow and insecure on purpose but the more i think about it there is a reason for that and well, this is what i'm going to discuss in this episode of the back engineering show Let's jump in to it. Welcome to the Back Engineering Show with your host Hussein Nasser. So these are the site bindings. You enable this option when you have enabled effectively TLS or HTTPS on your website. And the moment you enable secure uh, connection, you need obviously to enable a bunch of other things. One of the most important one is, is basically to, you need to have a certificate. And I made a video about certificate very recently, uh, talking about the details of why certificates exist and the technicality behind them. Check out the video right here if you're interested to learn more about it. But let's start with the first option, require server name indication. So this option is a TLS extension that basically forces the client to include the host name that you that it tries to connect to in the TLS client hello. So when you establish a TCP connection, you only have the IP address, given that you obviously did a DNS before that. But you lost that fact. You are now communicating with the IP address. But then, when you only communicate with the IP address, you lost that context. The database, the database, the server doesn't know which domain you intentionally wanted to connect to. That's an IP address. You might say, Hossein, an IP address is equal to a domain. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can have many domains that point to the same IP address. This is how web sharing works, right? So the TLX extension here forces you, if you if you check this option, require server name indication, forces the client to include the domain name that it wants to connect in the TLS hello. This way, now we know which domain you want to, because I can have an IP address 1.2.3.4, but I host hosseinnasr.com, uh, adamnasr.com, alihsain.com whatever.com i have i can have many many domains pointing to the same ip address and have completely different content because each one will be served different certificates even different folder directory different everything because the reverse proxy will just will we'll just point you to the right location based on the domain and how do you have this context TLS, hello, using the server, name, and occasion. And then this is the option, basically. This is where you force the client to include that server name indication. So this is so older clients that don't understand SNI, server name indication, will basically fail to connect. Because if you don't include it, then if your IIS a web server has multiple sharing websites, right? on the same IP address, which is the most economical thing you can do, right? Then those clients will really get weird errors. We want we want them to fail so that, hey, you, you're just uh, really uh, an old client, an old TLS client, effectively, right? And that, how do you upgrade your old TLS client? You get a, an updated OpenSSL or LibreSSL or whatever library SSL you're using, right? And this is deep down. So if you're using Python or Go, those guys are using a TLS library. They must have, right? In order to make these connections. And you just figure out what connection, uh, what, what library are using effectively to do that. And uh, 
most of the time it's really inherited from the operating system yeah those guys just call into the os whatever library exists it will just pull it up so yeah that's the first one so the second option is disable tls 1.3 over tcp notice that these all these options are always a negative which is the worst thing ever in my opinion right it, to build a ux that is you know a checkbox that indicates a negative is the most confusing thing that you can build in a user experience because i built something like that and i, and I remember exactly regretting the fact that i used the negative like that and it's just confused when you want to talk about it, oh did you disable quick is your disable quick option checked is your disable quick option enabled it just become so confusing to talk to right it's like if you wanted to talk to someone it's like, oh have you have you enabled the disable <laughs> have you enabled the disable tls 1.3 over tcp whoa yeah bad idea bad user experience i i don't know if they have figured this out but this is really bad i just don't like this at all so regardless this is what we have let's talk through them so the first option is disable tls 1.3 over tcp and very critical the word over tcp here because they want to differentiate between tls 1.3 over tcp which is mostly http2 and http1 uh, right http3 is not on top of tcp right so because it's on top of quick and that also uses tls 1.3 so you want to disable ts 1.3 over tcp but you want to keep quick enabled for some reason you might say i say why are we disabling ts 1.3 ts 1.3 is the best option because first of all it's faster right and more secure faster in the sense that it's one round trip instead of two that's compared to tls 1.2 right and uh, it, it, it's it's more secure because it uses the latest and greatest ciphers it deprecates uh, rsa key exchange algorithms and anything that is basically uh, not perfectly forward algorithms and just have the latest and greatest stuff and it's being improved and improved and improved even recently they are working on something called encrypted client hello so even the initial tls client hello is completely almost completely encrypted why would you ever disable that hmm thinking through this slightly i thought it was like maybe maybe the administrator who's hosting ios maybe they don't want everything encrypted they want to snoop on its users <laughs> and they, they in combination with the require server name indication you can actually snoop on people only if you disable ts 1.3 right because if you enable ts 1.3 and the client is so advanced it does a uh, an encrypted client hello you're out of luck you can never know what the user actually is connected to so you don't know which domain they want to go through right the second option or the third i guess disable legacy tls this they called it legacy i guess but they are i think they're referring to tls 1.1 and tls 1.0 and ssl3 and anything that is basically old so they didn't want to list everything basically they said okay let's just disable all the tls this is a good thing and I'm surprised that this is not really enabled by default. That, that's, that's the confusing part. That's the confusing part. I'm surprised that these are not disabled by default, right? And I'm also surprised that this option is not enabled by default. Does that make sense? It's just so confusing talking through this double negative things. Um, so yeah, disabling legacy TLS. The only reason I can think of uh, why IIS won't don't want to disable this by default to disable legacy tls by default is because older clients older clients still use tls 1.1 and tls 1.0 and they they still want to connect to some iis endpoints and you want this option to essentially support backward compatibility that's the only reason i can think of but effectively when i build good secure website this has to be checked 
you need to disable legacy TLS to get a good scoring on the stops website. Um, let's go to disable OCSP stapling. I talked about that exactly on, on my certificate uh, video, right? OCSP stands for Online Certificate Sta uh, Status Protocol Stapling. And this is the only reason I can think of why you would you want to disable this is uh, to minimize the overhead uh, that the backend is doing, which is IIS. The IIS, if you if you have OCSP stabling, then the backend, which is IIS, needs to phone into some sort of an OCSP server to prove that its certificate has not been rev revoked effectively, and that needs first an internet connection thanks noah second it requires more work effectively in your end right because you're you're consuming at work bandwidth you're consuming cpu you're consuming precious memory right and resources on the back end to do these uh intervals of ocsp phoning elm right to get the the to approve that your certificate hasn't been revoked so it's an extra you know, work. So you can disable this. And you, I think you can disable this safely if your certificate is a, is a very, very short certificate, right? Uh, you're using Let's Encrypt, for example, or you're using uh, uh, Cloudflare's uh, two-week certificates, right? And you have all your cert management automated. I think you can safely disable that, in my opinion. But if you have long certificates, like two years, which I think browsers start to give warning when connecting to that, uh, then I think you have to kind of have this option enabled just to prove that your certificate hasn't been st stolen. When I say stolen, your private key hasn't been stolen effectively. Disable quick. Why would you ever want to disable quick? <laughs> quick. So this tells us first that uh, IIS supports quick by default, which is beautiful which means supports quick and HTTP3, anything above that. This is kind of good, if you, if, which also means that you have TLS 1.3 for free, connection management for free in a single beautiful handshake. And obviously, uh, this whole thing is, is, is done through UDP. So you need this. This is good stuff. This is fast, more secure, obviously, latest and greatest technology. You might want to disable it if you, again, want the, the admin want to look through the content and quick obviously prevents you from looking into anything, right? Uh, I believe even quick encrypts the sequence number in the connection, in the quick connection. So even you cannot even see those, which is pretty cool thing. If you think about it, TCP, on the other hand, these sequence numbers, these window sizes, right, the congestion windows and other bits are all there in the open. Anyone in the middle can actually read them. And your router effectively keeps even track of these connections. So if it sees, okay, it, it keeps tracks and a running account of all the connections and the sequence numbers uh, so that it can just disconnect you anytime it wants. So yeah, disabling quick. If you want, you can disable it. But to be honest, I can't think of a reason why you want to disable it other than really you want to uh, force users through a path to use the backward compatible way, right? Um, maybe, maybe uh, if you're, um, I guess it's not a bad idea to have this fine level control uh, because quick and for that matter, HTTP2 uh, is a CPU hog. Both tech are CPU hungry. And the reason is because um, uh, they, 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 uh, that's the other option we're going to come to, the disable HTTP2, right? These both, let's actually lump them together. Disable quick and disable HTTP2. They are together. They give you the option to disable them because they have some sort of a side effect. And the side effect is this uh, leaky abstraction that, yeah, we give you all this beautiful security, one hand, one handshake and for HTTP2 we give you multiplexing, Quick also gives you multiplexing, but it's more general uh, layer 4 protocol, but it's expensive. 
because each packet has to be inspected and segments, right, has to be combined so they can be inspected for the stream IDs. And now the application or the operating system need to group similar streams together right in in its own segments in its own logical segment this grouping and discarding of things and waiting and congestion control based on each stream is expensive because all of this is just you know you're shoveling through packets and it should be one one you don't have to do any of this crap right whatever you receive what you get is what you see what you see is what you get that that's that's what it is any packet that you see it's it's just just decrypted if you're using TLS and then just consume it immediately, right? And then just buffer, 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 buffer. And that's that's an HTTP request. I said, there is no there is no headers, right? When I say headers, there is no protocol headers. Yes, there is HTTP headers, which is to me just part of the content. But in HTTP2, there are headers at the protocol level. There are HTTP2 TCP headers, you know? wrong wrong saying there are just you know the, the protocol itself has its own system headers that's the right word okay which is an overhead right you, it's an increased overhead so you have to th look through these header which has the stream id which has the congestion control for http 2 so much work both of quick and http 2 and the community behind quick effectively they're working on reducing the cpu usage uh, more and more so ios gives you an option which is I, I don't think is wrong i take my word back right uh, as i think more about it it's just maybe give you an option hey disable it if you think uh, your cpu is shining up high disable it if you have a scalable vertical uh you know badass machine enable it but watch out for your cpu when you when you have enabled these two so i, th I think it's a good idea to have these options so they the the admin have a configurable way to disable those if they want to see where where uh, you know the, they want to manage their resources and uh, and finally the option to ssl certificate we know this is required Hey, hey, you need to authenticate yourself. Who are you, right? And I believe when you require server name indication, there is another window that serves what uh, host name correspond to what certificate. This is not in this window. This is probably another window. So you can effectively say, okay, uh, whatever. Like like in my domain, right? I have backend.husseinnasr.com. That's a certificate by itself. I have uh, I have a database.husseinnasr.com, which points to Udemy, my my course, right? Get that course. And I have nginx.husseinnasr.com. That that's a completely different certificate. Each one of them is a different certificate. So I'm using Let's Encrypt for that. Uh, and and the backend I'm using Netlify, but my domains are just aliased to Netlify, right? So that's what I'm doing. It's the same thing here. And and so how was how does this work? You need SNI for this to work. So so that the back end, in this case Netlify, knows what certificate to serve back to the client. And as a result, uh, establish the connection successfully. All right, guys, let's end it here. This was uh, an overview of all the options in the HTTPS binding in IIS. And I think uh, you can agree that this is really has nothing to do with IIS. These options literally must, I think, exist, most of them at least, in uh, in any reverse proxy and any web server, in my opinion. This li fine level controls is what backend engineers really require and need. Right? Gonna see you on the next one. You guys say awesome. Goodbye, or this next.